Hey guys, welcome to a windy afternoon in my shop. We are building out the playlist about a guitar kit world Gibson ES175 kit. Now, um, this is the second episode and what we're going to do in this one is we're going to get the guitar ready for finishing. That doesn't mean we're going to bolt it up and finish it uh, and have it playable. What it means is we're going to do the fine sanding and the surface prep that's necessary for us to take it to the next step, which is putting an actual finish on it. That finish is going to be kind of strange because it's going to incorporate techniques they used to use to finish violins in the 1700s in Cremona, Italy. So we're going from the name called Mississippi Mudslide, which originated when I found this set of refrigerator magnets about 15 years ago. So we're going to go from ridiculous to, I don't know, semi-scientific. But in the opening episode, I told you about the dilemma I had with, I started off building cigar box guitars, license plate guitars, coffee can guitars, and was feeding trash blues artists. And then I moved up to arch tops and my instruments, even the junk ones that I first started with, were, were known to be individual and reliable. Then I started running around the L.A. market and picking up these old trashed out 40s, 50s, and 60s. Oh, by the way, if it's got a V-neck, late 40s, 40s, 30s, 40s. Anyway, these junk arch tops floating around L.A., I pick them up. And then I was beefing them up, building up the insides, doing something to keep the necks on, and then individualizing them. And in that first episode, in the playlist, the introduction, I'm going to give you a link to it right up there. You're going to see why I did this, what the uh, influence was on me, and how I made the jump to the kit. And then in that episode, we actually open up the kit and have a look at it right out of the box to see what the quality of it looks like. Okay, I want to remind you um, that through this series of episodes, the Texas junk pile here, um, you've seen this before, you've seen a lot of artists play it, um, it is going to be the comparable to this kit. Um, the body shape is the same, it looks the same, um, but again the idea is there's not going to be a lot of the prep work and the structural stuff I have to do on the side of the guitar to make this turn out to be this. Again, this guitar was an uh, ES-175 knockoff, I think from Japan, made somewhere in the 60s. And um, I picked the uh, Guitar Kit World ES-175 kit strictly because of the pocket. Again, hover up there where the eye is and it will show you that episode. Once we're done, we're going to get... Um, an entire playlist that takes you through this build start to finish good, bad, and ugly. I'm not compensated by this kit maker or anything like that. This is about me moving into a new world of durability. Now, before we get the overhead shot on this and watch what I do, you'll notice that there's a couple things put together on this guitar already because I need to get the holes that I need to drill in this and done, I want every hole that is going to need to be in this guitar, whether it's on the neck, um, you're going to see me put relic wood like I usually do. You're going to see coins drop in where when you're dropping down into the 12th fret with your slide, your thumb knows where to be. There's going to be historical significance. There's going to be influences on blues of people and bits of wood from either where they were recorded, where they died, or where, where their church was embedded in here. You guys know my work. And then when we start getting down into the body, you're going to see that I'm going to use old cans and stuff to do surrounds, and um, it's going to be my usual stuff, even though it's going to look like a new kit. So I want to get every hole that I need in this thing drilled in it before I put the finish on it. Once those holes are drilled and we know what's happening, then I will sand it. I'm going to give you some ideas about sanding and what's important. In fact, let's start that now. Okay, guys, my day job is I'm what they call an arborist. I run the tree program for a city that I think just about everybody in the world has heard of, so, but we're not here to drop names. I will tell you this, that arborists, when it comes to uh, good arborists, 
people aren't looking for someone to tell them that their tree has a manganese deficiency. They're looking for someone that can tell them that trees are safe, uh, that uh, uh, they're not going to hurt the public, that you have a historic tree that's structurally okay. That's kind of the mark of an arborist. In addition to the administrative work I do, I also tend to write papers every once in a while, and the papers that I have written talk about the structure of palm trees. Palm Miro. Palm Miro is a word, uh, a Spanish word, meaning people who work on palm trees. So Palm Miro, John Powell guitars, that's where that came from. But if I go out and speak at a conference or write a paper, the comparison is always the hardwood trees that you guys are likely having because only in the temperate regions of the world palm trees exist. The rest of, of the world, they're not really that important. Now, we know that regular trees put on wood, like you see in this pattern, rings year after year, another ring. I'm grabbing something here that's going to be important here in a minute, trust me. Um, but the rings grow on top of each other, kind of like you would stack cups or something. So you get these tubes or pipes. We know that pipes don't have to be solid to support a structure. We're talking metal pipes and columns, and, and trees are kind of the same way. They have some tissue in between the rings, but they work kind of the same way. And in fact, some trees can be hollow up to a certain extent before they lose their ability to handle gravitational loading. Anyway, if you want to really, really... Um, read anything I've written about all this stuff and you find it fascinating, first thing, you need to see a psychiatrist. Next thing is, you can send me an email. My email is always at the end of the episode. So, that said, when we're working on guitars, sanding guitars, or doing necks or anything like that, you want to remember that it's not economical. The best cut of wood would be across the diameter. And you'll see people using the term quarter sawn and stuff. So it kind of says we're not running up and down axially. That's the, that's the direction the tree tends to grow. Now, ideally what we want is we want to cut the wood even though it's cut with the length of the tree. Um, we like to cut it like this because we can get more board feet out of it and build more houses. Now, if the guitar neck or something or, or an I-beam in a house, we want to stand it on end like this. But in any event, when we're finishing wood, we like to think about this is kind of the ideal situation. Now, you want to remember that there are tubes inside of these pipes, they run, or, or these rings, they run up the tree. Uh, they separate from each other, and, and now we're getting into tree physiology and anatomy and stuff, but um, they're meant to connect to each other, so there's a continuum of moisture being pulled up through the tree. Um, the last thing you want in a tree is for it to lose its water column. So, you want to remember that the ideal situation, if you're staining, for example, you would like the wood, it's going to have its variances. You'll see the, the, the color of the wood, the character of the wood. Uh, but you really don't want to do things that create divots and pockets where stain sits and, and that kind of thing. Now, I want you to think about this shape, and then I want you to think about this shape. You see it's got a bow to it. Um, this violin piece of wood started out about that thick, tapers down to the edge, and somebody actually hollowed it out. So every time there is a drop down or a curve in the wood, what's happening is the continuum of those vessels gets broken, and you're shaping, um, through your shaping of it, more and more of those vessels, the ends of them, the sides of them stick out. Um, and if you're trying to stain these things and get a good... Uh, uh, even stain that accents the character of the wood, you're not going to get that unless this is sanded really smooth. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to think about when we're sanding what kind of technique we want to use. If the grain is running this way, we certainly don't want to swirl it and do that kind of thing. So we're always going to keep that in mind. Okay, guys, I almost forgot a couple things. First off, I was going to grab something back there, remember? to tell you that the structure in palm trees is not pipes inside of each other. It's a series of helix. The vessels run, vessels run up in helical fashion. And the reason for that is because when you side load something, if it's in a helical fashion, it resists splitting. 
like a slinky. So the vascular system of palm trees is like a slinky. Now you're going to see me running through the kit and drilling things into the neck and th drilling things into the um, around the pickups and where that kind of stuff goes and reinforcing things. And you're not really going to know what those things are per, per se until we get to the episode, episode about theming a guitar, which is going to tell you you know, the guitar you're carrying around, everybody knows it's not Eddie Van Halen's guitar, so instead of trying to fool everybody into something and then a good luthier looks at your guitar and goes, this is a kit guitar, you can save all that by just building it the way you want. Now, hopefully, this series of episodes will help you do that. So we're going to do this one, which is about um, getting this thing ready to finish, which means all the fine sanding and getting the holes in it you need. Again, I don't like drilling into um, the guitar after the finishes and we're going to find that I'm going to use a really weird finish it's going to have Mississippi River water in it it's going to have Mississippi clay in it. and again it's going to use really old technique because people couldn't in the 1700s and 1600s the peak at which most violins the, the, the most expensive violins in the world the collector violins were being made in Cremona Italy they didn't have uh, ace hardware to run down to and buy some varnish so we're going to we're going to delve into that one we're going to call that episode finishing the guitar then we're going to do individualizing the guitar and then we're going to talk about the hardware that comes with the guitar and all that and then at the end we'll find somebody to play one so i forgot to tell you give me a like and subscribe if you subscribe and hit the notification bell these videos that i'm doing here in this one about the uh, ES-175 guitar kit world kit will show up to you automatically uh, plus you'll see all my other projects and finally nobody likes to listen to a saw or a drill so I'm going to cut that noise out as I'm going along you're going to see me drilling holes in the neck you're going to see me doing things and you're going to say what are you doing well you'll find out later on in the theming episode but when we're hearing those noises that we don't really want to talk listen to I'm going to give you some music by Wendy Jean Garrison. Now, Wendy is down in Mississippi. She plays slide guitar. She is not like Troy Murrah or Bob Log III or anything like that. Her music tends to be along the lines of something you would hear from Leo Kotke or something like that. Good guitar, good music. Wendy Jean Garrison. I'm going to give you a link down below uh, in the resources section. Always check that. When you're asking, where do I get something, who is that that I'm hearing? Okay, guys, the first thing I want to show you is that this kit does not have holes drilled for the trapeze uh, tailpiece. Um, it doesn't have holes drilled for the surrounds that mount the pickups. And um, if I were going to put some upgraded pickups or something on here, I'd be happy about that. I'm not going to. We're just going to put the stuff where it goes. Now, you know that I put stuff underneath and around some of this stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I got some tape here. And I'm going to measure across. Again, I like using the metric system. I have on my channel a bunch of people who don't like that. Um, and... It's telling me that the center is about there. So I'm going to mark the center there and there. And then we're going to run down, make those two marks right there, like so. And we'll know without marking up the surface where the center is of all this stuff. Now, a couple of things here. This is the handiest thing that I have run across. It's one of these things that makes work really easy. I've got different tacks of tape. You don't want to be using high tack tape because sometimes if you're working on a guitar that has a finish, you'll pull it off. And then of course I got my binding tape. This thing is really cool when you need a free hand. You just pull it here, put it here. If you're doing binding jobs, it's really, really cool. So Get one of those if you're doing much of this work. Okay, I wanted to give you a quick uh, look at a couple of things. First, in the body, um, we do wraparounds on some of this stuff, and it's important that they match the shape of things, and then the pickups sit in there. Uh, it gives additional support, um, and, and it makes things more durable And in the long term. I've got some patterns that go either on the body or the neck. Um, 
I'm going to flip the neck on here next and show you. But the, the thing is, we put these templates on here. We line them up with the respective piece that they go with. And then drill the holes where the holes need to be. And then we'll put that on the body like so and get the holes drilled in the right place. Okay, neck, same kind of thing. I want to remind you to always have um, rags and bean bags laying around. Have a ton of them. Uh, because when you lay your neck down now, I put the tuners on because we're going to have to drill the holes. I want to make sure those are lined up. Um, again, I don't want to give everything away, but there is a template. Something is going to cover this headstock. And then, of course, we've got the truss rod cover. I have all those things cut. We're going to put holes in them. And then on the back of the neck... Um, you're going to see a triangle pattern here laying here. You see that um, there are going to be three pieces of relic wood there. And then somewhere again down on the 12th fret, when we're dropping down into the 12th fret, you're going to know where your thumb is because there will be an old coin there. Um, there's also going to be a coin up here that's going to surprise you, but we'll get into all that when it's steaming. So I'm going to go ahead and drill all this stuff now. Last thing, the bit that you're using to pre-drill the holes. Make sure you know how thick this is. It doesn't hurt to put a piece of tape. If you know that this is going to be this thick, you just put the tape up there and you know you're not going to drill into it like so. You see that? Um, it will start flapping the sawdust off when you're drilling your holes. That's a good thing. Um, and don't drill the hole bigger than the screw. Of course, always pre-drill the hole because if you don't, you're going to end up with a problem trying to put the screws in. When you strip the screws out of tuner heads, it just turns into a hassle later. I'll show you another little trick here. If I don't want to drill um, with the tuners there, I can take this all. I can just line up the tuners, tap this a little bit like so, and then I can take these off and then drill my holes as I go. Some people like to do that. There you go. Now, you're going to catch glimpses of it and enjoy that music from Wendy Jean Garrison. I did a bunch of layout here. And I am going to take this rag away from here, and we're going to use this cork neck stand. I always have one of these. You can turn it in any different way. Set it back up here on the edge of the drop down. And again, I reference putting relic wood in here, which I'm going to use this pattern for. And I'm going to put a coin right back in here again where your thumb is going to be when it slides into the 12th fret. So it's a it's a reference point plus the coin will have something interesting. So I want to make sure these are lined up on the neck. So I've made a mark at the center of the headstock and the center of the neck where it's going to drop down to the pocket. I take my fancy Beverly Hills California stick that I use to lay out scale and intonation. I put the marks there and I just look over the top and it's going to give me the center of the neck. Then I take those marks, I put my pattern, line the pattern up with the center, like so, and then I can take my awl, and again, tap everything, make a mark, and then drill it out. Okay, guys, we have everything marked out for a relic wood. Um, for that, um, after using the awl to push holes in, like so, we made our marks and then just went around like this and just pushed them in. We don't have to beat on them with a hammer or anything. Always remember, I've got the arch top underneath here. This is not best practice. Anyway, with the relic wood is going to go, we're going to use quarter inch plugs of relic wood. So we're going to use a quarter inch Forstner bit. You see how that fits in there. Now what I want to do is... I want to make sure that I take my pilot bit and drill a hole first because that Forstner bit has a nub on it 
we are going to put a 1927 nickel back here in the middle for where your thumb drops down in when you're doing a 12th fret and that has a corresponding Forstner bit as well. Again, it has a nub, so we want to drill a pilot hole. So I'll kick the sound off. We'll go to Wendy Jean Garrison again, and you can watch me do this. Okay, so next we're just going to do the same thing here. We're going to um, use the pattern, push with our all little marker holes in there, um, drill the starter hole with a small bit like this. We want to remember there's going to be another coin up here. My stuff's jumping off the table now. There's going to be another coin up here. It's not going to be a nickel. It's going to be specific to something in Mississippi. And now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out when we lay the tuners back in here whatever this cover is going to be is going to have to be fitted so the tuners come up and through make sure there's no clashes with any of the hardware and that is where what will determine what the coin is we'll do the same thing we'll drill a starter hole we'll drill a hole the size of the coin through the cover and down into the headstock anyway that's about it for the headstock um, we've got a couple more things to do on the body, and I'll show you what that looks like now. I think you're catching on pretty quick. We find the middle of the guitar. We lay uh, out some tape so we don't mark up the guitar body. It's going to tell us where our tail piece needs to be back here when we drill these three holes by determining that it sits like so and then rides up here. We want to make sure that those holes are right. Anyway, we lay this out like this, then we take our templates. We know that there's a cutaway that the neck needs to fit down between here. So I line up those center marks there, do what I need to do. There and there. And then it's a matter of the surround that holds our pickup to drop right there. And then we just take the all mark out those holes and then drill everything the way it needs to be. Okay, for the trapeze tailpiece, we have found the middle. Before you start drilling, you want to make sure that this is sitting in the right spot. You don't want it way too low like this. You don't want it way up here where it's acting crazy. It's going to ride right there. That mark right there is the middle. We're going to take our awl and push down and give ourselves a little guidance. We can see those marks if we're looking in the light. You can always do the same thing with a pencil because these are going to be hid once that part is right there. There we go. Now, one thing I have to tell you is that we're going to run a grounding wire um, so we don't get buzz or anything and it's going to come down. It's going to wrap around one of these holes but we're going to drill a hole right about there. It's got to go through all the way through the tail block and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that hole, that wire Grounding wire will come through, we'll strip it down, wrap it around once 
these anchor screws are in here and it will be hid under here and that way when somebody takes this off they ever have to it will be exposed so let's get these drilled while we listen to Wendy Jean Garrison Okay guys, I want to show you a cool little trick. Um, first, you want to remember that anytime they drill a hole for a switch up here or potentiometers here, you want to remember regardless of how careful they are, unless they're using a reamer that has a backup after they drill, there's going to be some kind of a blowout here. And if that's on the underside and you're putting your potentiometers in and there's something in there doing this, after a while your pots are going to work loose, your knob is going to work loose, and that's a problem. So let me show you a little trick here. Um, always protect the top of your guitar. Now, I've told you in my other episodes that they make sandpaper. It's got backing on it. Now you see this used in auto shops or whatever, but I'm going to cut a thin strip of 400 grit sandpaper, real thin, like so. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, get a couple here just in case something happens, is I'm going to take a piece of coat hanger and a pair of dikes and cut it off and then just bend this over like so. You see that? So it's got an L shape on it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my sandpaper with the backing and then I'm going to make a slit almost to the middle there and almost to the middle there. You see that? Then I'm going to peel this up like so. There's one. I should be doing better with the insides of the guitar by covering it, but I got a cool little vacuum that I'm going to show you later. Anyway, this is the part that kills me on my episodes. I can never seem to get this off of here cut this out okay there we go see it's 400 grit then I'm going to lay this into there with the bend where I made those cuts now I'm going to do this and this you see that cool now I'm going to take, take my chick flick teal scissors and we're going to cut that off there we're going to cut that off there. There we go. We end up with this. Press it down, make sure it works. Now, because it's L-shaped, you can put it down in the hole and you can pull up on this and spin it around and all of that burr if any that's laying in there gets taken off and the hole that your pot is going to sit against doesn't have anything to make it wobbly or offset then you take this piece here and you just put it in your toolbox all right guys we're finally ready sorry that took so long but you know what you've really got to have things in order and once you start putting a finish on like we're going to then you'll understand why this has been so critical to me so the first thing i want to tell you is we're not going to use brushes and things on this and um, it's my experience that when you start using brushes with the kind of thing uh, that we're going to do you're over here moving around and trying to get this we need to be able to put a finish on this thing quickly and while it's still wet we're going to do something else and we're going to use these rags they're actually paper 
Kimberly Clark makes them. They're called wipe all. This is number 80. So it stands to reason if I'm going to use something like this to put uh, finish on, I want to know if this fiber is going to hang up anywhere on the guitar. So I'm going to go over it everywhere and see, is there a, there's a little bit right there, a little bit right here, tad up in here. But I will tell you what, the way this guitar came in is it was sanded really, really well. Now, you remember me telling you that grain runs this way? And you can see that this thing does have an arch in its top. It's not a flat top. So this part is higher than down here, which means all those vessels that I were was talking about, they're exposed to one level or another, broken, shaved, or whatever, until you get up in here, and then they're all pretty much flat. Now, if all those are different, it drops down in here a little bit, and you don't sand this smoothly, what ends up happening is your finish puddles in certain spots, and those fibers being disc continuous hey that's a good word I usually make up words on this channel but anyway it gives it the ability to hang up and then you get a distraction the only thing I see on this whole guitar the binding is tight there's no gaps there's a little something right there and that could be from a whirl of branches where a branch whirl w-h-o-r-l was now I have sanding sponges I have a 400 I have a 1000 and I have a 1500. We want this really smooth and then finally when I'm done, I'm going to use one of these. This is a 12 to 1500 grit sanding sponge. These are really cool for getting down in here. Now, I think you know how to sand. Um, what I'm going to warn you against is don't do this. Get yourself comfortable. This thing will spin for me. I can turn it this way. I want the grain running with me. So I'm doing this and I'm doing passes like this. I'm not going to work on this area and then this area and this. I'm going to take passes like this. Take a couple of passes like that. Come down the edge again. I want to be with the grain. I don't want to be swirling. Remember when you swirl and cross that grain over more of those fibers get affected and then you'll end up with lines and stuff down in here. So it's first it's just 400 all the way. Watch this piece right here. That can break off really easy and that'll affect how everything sits. Don't be afraid to pick up and draw towards you. And we are just going to keep doing this you need to get that cotton ball out of the way in the wink can and just keep doing this and then take your wipe all rag along the way and see if it hangs up anywhere this is what we're going to put our coating on with and we don't want it hanging up so if the wipe all rag doesn't get hung up then it's going to be great so we're just going to continue to do this we're going to do the front back and uh, sides. By the way, this is called a soundboard. The top of a guitar or a violin is called the soundboard. Uh, we'll get into resonance maybe in another episode if you subscribe to my channel. But then we're going to take the thousand and do the same thing. I tell you, this guitar came in pretty much good to go. And by the time you get down to the end of it. Yeah, see, I'm not grabbing anything. The only thing that's grabbing is right in here where these are. And if I pick them up a little bit like that, it's good. Now, better than the sponge when we finally get to it. Notice I'm not going like this. I did an episode about a very elementary junky finish and um, I was swirling it to make the starburst spray paint starburst um, come together a little bit better but now we're into this and this makes it really easy in fact you can get all of these instead of using these thick sponges you can use these and they're a little bit more expensive but once I get into this 
again, I, I might be going back and forth here, and, but I'm overlapping and I'm staying on the grain. Don't give in to the idea that you want to do this along this edge. You really don't want to do that. Um, this is going to kind of become really important with the kind of finish we can put on it. Um, the theme of this thing is ridiculous and the inspiration for it is equally ridiculous. But when you get into this finish, you're going to see we want this thing to absorb evenly. We don't Look at that. Nothing is hanging up. There's no dust coming off these Wipeall number 80s, and we're going to finish. But these are kind of expensive. They're 17 cents a piece, but you can wash them out. These are actually replacements for shop rags. You saw people that was using machine shops and things like that. But again, we're going to start here. We're going to see if there's any hang up, like so. Go around. There doesn't seem to be anything. So we'll take, just like we did with everything else, I like having this table where I can just work with the grain. I'm building a rolled around guitar vise that you guys are going to think is pretty cool too. And the same thing, you just go through the grits all the way around until we end up at this one. Yeah, I got some more work, a little bit more work to do with the other two. I can feel it. But the idea, I'm not forgetting about that Florentine cutaway by the way. That's what that's called, a Florentine cutaway, that cutaway that comes to the peak and then again, nice and smooth, look at that. All right, there we go. Feeling good all the way around everywhere where we've drilled or worked is good. I'm really, really impressed with where this neck pocket is. Usually this is really rough and I can run 1500 grit sanding sponge over it and it doesn't pick up hardly anything. I'm really impressed with that. Okay. Let's get the neck up here and take a couple look, look at things there and we'll wrap this episode up. All right, we've got all of our holes drilled. It's basically the same thing. I'm not going to worry too much about this right here because um, I'm going to put a cover over that. But since we're looking at something that you might be using uh, for your own project, it may be really important to you that this is pristine. So even after I've drilled the holes... I'm taking the wipe all rag, and this is where I would expect a lot of slop. This is where people usually fail uh, on a guitar neck, is this kind of stuff has to be radiused smoothly. And again, as I take this over, there's nothing there. Um, the only place that I saw was a little bit where it hangs just, I can feel it just ever so slightly as up here. Now remember, this is going to fit down in here, and this is the make it or break it on this kit for me but we're going to do the same thing you all know that Tammy signs my guitars now you can see these little crimps here these little divots where I tighten down the tuners the finish that I'm going to put on here is going to shock you because it's going to put the skids to that and um, I can put my 
neck rest with the it's made out of cork back here and get this up here like this where it's easy to work on again we're just going to take the 400 and we're going to stay on the grain and just go all the way up and do so go down the sides like this this is what's nice about these sponges again this is going to be junky so not really critical to me and your fingers aren't going to be running over here and stuff but I do like this stuff to be nice I don't like seeing these split out there's none of that um, when you're putting um, relic wood in here there's a truss rod in there don't forget about that we missed the truss rod here it runs right through here now the only place I created a little problem for myself is that Forstner bit doesn't work well on radiuses so when I put this coin in here like this I'm gonna have to do a little bit of extra work with maybe a little bit rougher sandpaper and then transition this down to where it's nice and smooth you don't want your fingers hanging up but I do that a lot and it's easy um, here it's just a matter of up and down up and down up and down like so turning it like this I wanted to point out to you I mentioned this in the opening when you run down your frets usually hot and cold coming from one place to another these will start to stick out a little bit because the frets don't uh, swell up and, and and shrink it's the wood that does so when things start shrinking that's what but very little work to do there uh, but again does your wipe all 80 hang up and the answer is no so I'm going to give this a once over with the sanding rag and I'll work on this right here a little bit to make sure that that coin fits in there but yeah this thing's good to go all right there we go uh, I really, really want to encourage you to check down below and see Wendy Jean Garrison's link down there. You can get that music. It's good to fall asleep to. Um, again, if you don't want to get all stressed out, anxiety attack, listen to some of the stuff I listen to. Um, yeah, did you see um, there's a Bullet Boys t-shirt back there somewhere? But anyway, Wendy Jean Garrison, thank you for the music. Now, um, this thing is ready to go. It's going to take a finish well. So as we go into the next episode, look for us to, number one, seal it. And then number two, do a weird technique using ground material and dirt and all kinds of stuff to give this guitar a finish that's going to fit really well with its theme, the Mississippi Mud Slide. You're going to see uh, live clips of stuff being collected from Mississippi, so you, you don't think I went down into uh, somewhere down here in the Cultural Capital World Act in California, put this stuff together. This is real, son, so I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a like and click subscribe.